I got this question many times. Can a speaker driver work without a permanent magnet? I actually never got this question and from now on I never will, because today I'm gonna answer it. Hello guys, my name is Sorin, welcome to a new episode of uh, Let's Answer Useless Questions. This video is sponsored by my patrons. I want to thank all my patrons for their support, because I invest a lot of money in components for my DIY videos. If you want to sponsor my channel starting with only one dollar, please check out my Patreon page and you can watch these videos a few days before I publish them on YouTube. You will also have access to updates about my future projects and a few private videos available only to my patrons. Just a few. And now let's build a speaker driver without a permanent magnet. This big PVC cap will be the speaker frame. The edge is too sharp, I need to cut it. So I will make a mark using what I have at hand. Then I cut it with a small hacksaw. It's pretty rough now. I will use this sandpaper to make it smoother. I marked the center in the back of the PVC cap and I will drill an 8mm hole. This is where the permanent magnet should be mounted. The speaker frame is finished. I made a lot of 10mm holes because the pressure inside will change when the speaker membrane vibrates. I already built a pretty good speaker driver with permanent magnet. You can watch it in this video. But what if all around the world there are no more magnets? All types of permanent magnets are used, gone. What do we do then? We need speakers. An option is to build electromagnets. Let's try that. But magnets are also used in electricity production. Shut up. But what's an electromagnet? It's a coil made of copper wire wound around the core, which is made from a ferromagnetic material like iron. When there is an electrical current passing through the wire, it creates a magnetic field, which is concentrated in the center, so in the magnetic core. I got these nice metal washers here to make the core. They will be held together with an 8mm screw. You can see that they are not all the same size. Four of them are smaller, because I need some space for the coil. The holes in the washers have a diameter of 9mm. I will add a piece of masking tape on the 8mm screw, so the washers will be centered. I've insulated two big washers, because the coil will be made between them. The smaller washers should also be insulated. I have some 30 years old copper wires here, salvaged from old transformers. Not because I'm a hoarder, but because I'm a collector of old transformers. I think this one is thick enough. If I use thicker wire, the impedance will be too low. I will wind the coil manually, I just need to be careful on the first few turns to make them straight. The first layer is finished, I will start winding the second layer. You need very good vision for this task. Winding copper wire over copper wire can easily trick your eyes. For the third layer I added some masking tape. It's easier to see the wires. I finished the coil with a total of 6 layers. I could add one or two more layers, but it will be difficult to wind them straight, because there is no more space between the washers, and I want the coil to be straight and fixed to the core. Let's check the impedance. 2.7 ohms? I was hoping for more. I will test it with my variable power supply. With the minimum voltage of 1.28 volts, the coil draws 478 milliamps. You can also use Ohm's law to calculate the current. At the moment, the electromagnet is not strong enough to move the two screws, so I will slowly increase the voltage, which will also increase the current consumption. The smaller screw is attracted to the electromagnet now, and at 2.1 amps the second screw moves. Let's try another test. At 0.5 amps the electromagnet is weak. I will increase the current to 1 amp. A bit stronger, but not enough. 1.5 amps, it's better now. And at 2 amps, it's very strong. But there is a problem. 
With great power comes great responsibility, I mean uh, comes a higher temperature. Using this digital thermometer, you can see that the electromagnet is heating up. The temperature inside the coil is even higher. And the current consumption is decreasing now, because when the copper wire gets hot, its impedance is increasing. At this moment, the coil impedance is higher than 3.1 ohms. I temporarily added some electrical tape on the washers, so the electromagnet will not dismantle when I remove the nut. I will fix the electromagnet to the speaker frame with the same nut. The electrical tape can be removed now, carefully. These small pieces of strip board will serve as terminals for the electromagnet coil. I will stick them to the frame with just a drop of super glue. The electromagnet and speaker frame are finished. Let's move on to the most difficult part, the voice coil. What will be the height of the coil? In the upper side I will stick it directly to the speaker membrane and in the lower side I want it to cover about 3 washers. So 15 mm should be enough. I also need a mold for the voice coil, so I made one from the same type of washers. The bobbin of the voice coil will be made from this piece of white paper, which I cut from a paper painting pad. This painting paper is thicker and stronger than regular printing paper. I will bend it around the mold and glue it, but with a little space between the bobbin and the mold. This gap will be filled with a few pieces of paper. And it's ready for winding. But what wire should I use? Let's go back to the old transformers. I need a thinner wire now. This small transformer is the right guy for the job. To stick the copper wire to the bobbin, I will mix two parts adhesive and I will apply just a thin layer. For this step you need slow drying adhesive because it will take a few minutes to wind the copper wire. I need to calibrate my sharp eye now. The first few turns are critical, they need to be perfectly straight, because the rest of the turns will be parallel to the first one. This adhesive takes a few minutes to start to harden, and about one hour to fully dry. The first copper layer is finished, now I will add a small amount of adhesive and repeat the process. In my last speaker driver video I used my power drill to wind the voice coil, but today I will do it manually, because I am in a hurry. This is how it looks after two layers of copper wire, manually wound. The turns look pretty straight. And the voice coil is finished with a total of four layers of wire. I added one more piece of paper to make the voice coil stronger. After one hour the glue is dry and the voice coil is finished. I just need to remove the pieces of paper. Now the speaker cone which will actually be a simple membrane made from the cardboard of the painting pad. I will measure a circle and cut it. This cardboard is pretty strong. I need the flexible material for the speaker suspension or surround. What about this mouse pad? I only paid one dollar for it. It's thin, flexible and strong. Actually it's much stronger than I expected. Finally, I managed to punch a hole for the scissors. I need only the black foam. Let's check if my measurements are correct. It's super glue time. The voice coil is prepared for the next step. It will sit around here and vibrate up and down. I could have made the voice coil a bit smaller. But these washers are not identical, the electromagnet is not perfectly round. Anyway, let's fix the voice coil to the membrane, using super glue of course. I need some flexible leads. These thin copper wires will work fine. I made 4 holes in the membrane for the coil wires and leads. The soldering joints should be glued to the membrane, otherwise they will vibrate and buzz. I can mount the membrane now. Yes, the gap between the voice coil and magnetic core should be smaller. The closer the coil is to the magnet, the stronger the magnetic field will be. Before I fix the membrane to the frame, I need to make sure the voice coil is centered. Remember to ventilate the room when using super glue. 
and the simple speaker driver is finished. The suspension and excursion seem to be good enough for its size. The impedance of the voice coil is 3 ohms. Kind of small, but it will work. It's time to test this homemade speaker driver. I will connect the electromagnet coil to my variable power supply. For the voice coil I will use one of my old audio amplifiers, because we need a lot of power. Let's play some no copyright music now. Ok, the sound quality is not very good, but it works. So calm down. Even if all the magnets disappear, we will still have speaker drivers. To improve this type of speaker driver, the electromagnet coil should have more turns to handle a higher current for a bigger magnetic field. And the gap between the voice coil and the magnetic core must be as small as possible to be able to use most of the magnetic field. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, leave a comment and hit the like button. Bye! But magnets are also used in electricity production. We can power the electromagnets with solar panels.